Hey there, I'm Trevor Houston, the creator of the Who You Know Summit, and I'd like to welcome you to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. On our program, we'd like to show you the job search like you've never seen. Everything from getting noticed by employers, how to properly format your resume, and how to network effectively using LinkedIn to drive recruiters to your profile. We even take suggestions from our amazing community. So if you want to learn all things job search, go ahead and subscribe now. Focus. It's all about the job search. So if you want to learn how to land that next success, you heard them. All you got to do is subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on a thing. Welcome back to the Who You Know Job Networking Show where what you know is important, but who Who you you know? know? Who you know can make all the difference in your job search. Let me tell you who I know. I know this guy named uh, Glenn Lundy, and he is a husband to one and father to eight. Yeah, that's right. I said eight. He's also the founder of the hashtag Rise and Grind Morning Show. I'm repping that right now. Yeah. And Breakfast with Champions, the Millionaire Breakfast Club on Clubhouse. Not to mention, he's an auto industry leader, motivational speaker, and he's on a mission to change the way you start your day. If everybody can give me a warm welcome for Glenn Lundy, my man. <laughs> yeah. What up? What up, man? Let's go. Yeah, this is like family up in here. Yeah, man, man you got money everywhere. You got wholesome donuts. <laughs> like, I'm ready. Let's do this. This is a long time. This has been a long time to making. I know. Well, last time you were here, you were up on the screen. Right, virtual. And uh, we've done a lot of virtual we've done a lot yeah. of that yeah and this is the first time meeting you in person so um man i just want to say it's been an amazing run i just love you yeah thanks man for real um so i want to start off with hashtag rise and grind right yeah we'll talk about this okay because one of the things i think is yeah there you hey, go you one know, of the things i think know. is interesting about your show and hashtag rise and grind we actually, I, I, I didn't know this in the very beginning, but me and you started our show at the exact same time. Really? January 2018. Yeah, January 2000, January 6th was my first show. We were January 31st, last okay. day of the month. Dang, man. No, I had no idea. Four years, a little, little over four years. We just had our four-year anniversary, right? Yeah, yeah. And what I, I think is just so fascinating is that uh, this is episode 303. All right. <laughs> ah, he's laughing. <laughs> episode 303. Matter of fact. Congratulations, man. 300 episodes. Yeah. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. Let's get in the chat. If I can get everybody to put 303 uh, in the chat. Um, <laughs> Glenn, tell the audience how many episodes have you done with hashtag rise and grind? We had the same amount of time, by the way. Same amount of time. How many have you done? Well, we did a thousand episodes of Hashtag Rise and Grind Live 530, and then we actually did 25 episodes of a, uh, a variant of that show. So, a thousand twenty-five episodes. One thousand twenty-five. That's like... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, and I got to tell you, from somebody who does this, like, <laughs> you're a machine. <laughs> There's no way. Thanks, man. What the heck? You Why? <laughs> That's what I gotta ask you. Like, yeah. I mean, there's there's gotta be like a driver. What is it? That's there's, insane. Why? There's a few things. You know, the show originally. I just got sick and tired of all the negativity and nastiness on the internet, right? Okay. And I realized it was bothering me. And I'm a firm believer of something like. If there's something you don't like and you just kind of walk away from it, Mm. no big deal. But if something's really getting at you, it's like really bothering you, I believe that that's God's way of telling you to do something about it, right? He's leading you. He's guiding you. And so it was really bothering me, all the negativity. I knew I couldn't eradicate negativity online, but I thought maybe we could create a safe space, just a little tiny corner of the internet Mm. where people could come and it would be motivation, education, and inspiration, right? 
And so it started as that, plus it also made sense from a marketing standpoint, because I was running a, a dealership. I was the GM at a large dealership in Paris, Kentucky. And so for marketing purposes, having a show every day, and I'd say, my name's Glenn Lundy. I'm a husband to one, a father to, back then it was like five kids or something like that, a father to five, general manager at Dan Cummins Chevrolet and Buick in Paris, Kentucky, the second largest used car franchise dealership in America. It's 5.30 a.m. and I hope you're ready to rise and grind, right? So it was great marketing. We were creating positive space. And then also because of my season of homelessness, I know what it feels like to be, to feel invisible, mm. right? To where nobody will say your name, nobody makes eye contact with you to feel worthless. And so I knew we could use the show as a way to reach people in the dark corner and say their name. So if you notice on all my shows, every episode, I, we, we play a song and for three minutes, three and a half minutes, every episode, I just go through and say people's names. Shout out. Just shout out people's names. Hello, hello, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And and, and so... It makes, you feel, it makes you feel appreciated. It makes you feel seen. I remember the very first time I ever got a shout out. I had already been doing live streams. Right. So, so I was already, you know, doing productions and stuff. And then I got a shout out on a show one time and there was an energy to it. I was yeah. like, that's what that feels like. Yeah, that's right. When somebody says your name, it's a big deal, dude. Your name is is such a powerful component of your identity. Yeah. And so when someone shouts out your name, it it, it lights up something in you. You feel seen. And we all want to feel seen, heard, significant. So Rising Ryan was a way to do that. And originally I didn't know if people would watch Originally, I didn't even care if anybody would watch. Then people started to watch. Then we started getting messages from people that said, hey, I was invisible. I was thinking about taking my life. Mm. You said my name. Now, I'm, now I feel seen. My life's been turned around. And once you start hearing those, That's then it's like, you know, I'm waking up a little groggy or a little tired, but I'm going... Bro, you got to do a show. What if there's somebody sitting in their car right now with a gun waiting for you to say their name? You know what I'm saying? And so that's, that, that's been the driver behind it. So that, that Glenn, is why I do this. Um, I've lost a few people. We've lost some job seekers. Um, and, and, and suicide runs deep in my family. No one's... Uh, uh, been successful, thank God, but I, all throughout my entire life growing up, I've been in and out of the hospital with my own family. Yeah. You know? And like, when you see somebody and you, and you can see that hopelessness, it is, there's a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I have to put the light back. I have to give them some hope. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my pastor, uh, Pastor Ricky, um, he, passed away this last this last year for, due to covid but uh he told me he said trevor you're not a uh you're not a uh, dope dealer you're a hope dealer there you go <laughs> that's right he said you're a hope dealer much and, more uh, powerful yeah but um so yeah that's why we do this that's it that's it man i gotta reach people and so i appreciate what you do tell me why the morning though i gotta know because okay like you're on a whole nother level Right? Uh, 1,025 episodes. That's insane. In the same amount of time, guys. Same amount of time. So you talk about... Well, you tell me. Tell me why the morning. Because I got a lot of kids, bro. <laughs> <laughs> because I got a lot of kids. No, uh, that's a big part of it, though. Okay. I'm a firm believer if you're going to make a commitment to something, create... Make sure you create a realistic expectation. Yeah. I can't say I'm going to do a show five days a week and try to do it at 8.30 in the morning. Mm. It's not going to happen. Kids are going to be up. Somebody's going to need cereal. There's going to be a diaper that needs to be changed. The world's already moving. The world's moving. Yeah. And so when I first initially thought of doing the show, I was like, well, what time can I guarantee that nothing is going to get in the way? <laughs> and the only time I could find that I could guarantee nothing would get in the way and then still be able to go and do my job to run this dealership was, I had to do it at 5.30 in the morning. The great part about that was though, 
I've studied successful humans around the world and every single successful human that I've had the opportunity to study has a powerful morning routine. Mm -hmm. Now, what time they wake up varies, right? <clears throat> you could be successful at running a company that goes from you know, 10 o'clock at night till seven o'clock in the morning. You might go to bed at seven in the morning and get up at five, but it's what you do when you first wake up. If you change the way you start your day, it makes a massive impact in your life. So positioning the show in a way we could help people change the way they start their day at 5.30 a.m. and then also creating a space that I knew nothing would ever get in the way and I could still do all my other responsibilities and obligations. Well, it's genius, okay, it, it, it is. But there's also no competition at 5.30 a.m. Uh, uh, <laughs> Y'all hear that? Yeah, I told you this guy's genius, so he says no competition. That's right, ain't it's nobody else. people start their day off right, which is, goes it. to the mission, like, and, and you know, the family's not up yet, so you can be as loud as you want. Yeah. Right? In the studio. Or were you waking them up? Originally waking them up, <laughs> yeah, originally, but then my wife, you know, she was like, kicked me out. Now I have a studio 15 minutes down the road. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've also heard you talk about proximity, uh, uh, frequency plus proximity equals? Affinity. Tell me about that. Tell the audience about what that means. So there's a book called The Like Switch, L-I-K-E. The Like Switch. Switch, okay. And this book was written a guy who was a former FBI um, he worked for the FBI and it was his job to convert spies oh. from other during the war to be double agents. So he had to go find the spy, track him down, and convince the spy to, to turn, turn on. on their own country wow. to, for the United States of America. After he retired from that, he became a, a psychologist and worked at a university as a, as a, um, a psychology professor. So he wrote this book that puts together his negotiation tactics and strategies with the psychology of it. And in that book, there's this equation, frequency plus proximity equals affinity. So the more frequently we have an opportunity to interact with someone, the closer in proximity of those interactions, as long as the interaction is positive, the affinity will increase. We will become more attracted to each other, we will we will start to become more attractive. Now, not just necessarily like physically attractive, but attractive. We're right. attracted to that person for whatever reason. So, knowing that equation, you can apply it. So, my show frequency five days a week. Right. Proximity. Well, you can't get any closer than this, right? I had people that watch my show have a more intimate relationship with me, some of them, than they do with their, their own spouse. Because <laughs> if you think about it, where do you take this thing? Everywhere. Everywhere. So people are listening to me while they're in the shower. Mm. They're listening to me while they're on the toilet. Oh. They're listening to me in the car, oh, right? Man. They're listening to me everywhere. Proximity. So proximity is, <laughs> you can't get closer. <laughs> like you literally can't get closer. Wow. So we have frequency five days a week. Proximity, we're as close as humanly possible or as unhumanly possible, right? And so as long as I make a positive impact every time, every interaction is positive, the affinity increases, they like me more. And that's why our Rise and Grind audience is a loyal, loyal community that will go to the end of the earth for each other because they all see each other every morning too. They say mm -hmm. good morning to each other. So the frequency is there, the proximity is there, the wow. impact is there. That's that's huge, man. I got to give you more of that. <laughs> um, no, and, you, and, and, and like he's got this tribe. Uh, I, I told Glenn that his gift, Glenn, your gift is like, you know, getting people to uh, uh, come around you, right? The, the affinity. Right and to come around you for a common cause, right? You make people feel like a million bucks. You speak life in them, you speak hope into them. You make them feel just Thank so you. valued and seen. And like, I don't know if I've seen many people uh, have that gift to the level and the caliber that you do because you get them to rally around you for a common cause. And what you can do collectively 
is insane. Tremendous. What people can do. So I know that you've done a lot of, uh, of amazing things. I know that you've uh, won some awards for raising some money. Uh, we did some some stuff with uh, Tiffany Haddish's group and Clubhouse. Totally. Yeah. Right. What? And we raised a whole bunch of money. Actually, how much was that we raised up that day? Do you remember? For and then, Tiffany Haddish, we raised uh, forty five thousand dollars in a couple hours. And then Grant came in and matched it. Grant Cardone. Grant did a match. Yeah. He did a match. Yeah. Insane. Like it was just so cool. In a short amount of time, we were able to raise close to a hundred thousand oh, dollars. Amazing, amazing stuff. We've we've done uh, since I started the show. We've done well over a million dollars in different charitable uh, experiences where the community has just come together and, and done some amazing it's, things. It's incredible. It's awesome when people come together. And like I said, I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet anyways. You know, in my limited experience on this earth, I haven't seen anybody do it the way you do it. And I appreciate the way you do it. And uh, I know the communities do because you're helping so many people. Uh, let's talk a little bit about social audio, breakfast with champions, the evolution of hashtag rise and grind, sure. right? So, okay. So hashtag rise and grind, you started out in a closet. I did. Right? Yep. Started your show there. Yep. Actually, before we get into social audio, tell me about episode one. Yeah, episode one was rough, bro. <laughs> um, episode one, so I went up into the utility closet of my house. It was, it was upstairs. We had this uh, kind of 600 square foot playroom area, man cave that my kids had taken over. And there was a little utility closet that had the water heater in there. And so I set up a desk. It was about six, eight foot long and maybe four and a half, five feet wide. And I set up a desk in there so that you couldn't see the water heater, set up a light, little halo light and um, the little phone holder in the halo light thing and took a laptop computer and said, I'm just going to, you know, this is where I'm going to start go. tomorrow morning. And so I woke up the next morning at uh, 520 ish, 520 and the show was 530. So I got up at like 520, meandered upstairs, turned on that bright halo light. Ah! I was like, ah, like I felt like a vampire, you know, like, ah! <laughs> or I'm melting, melting, melting. It was awful. <laughs> and, uh, but I turned on that light uh, 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 and, and hit live and you can watch it, man. It's up there. It's about, I don't know, seven minutes long or something. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing, what I was going to say. And then day two was maybe eight minutes and day three was maybe nine. And, you know, now if you can get, keep me under 30 minutes, you're lucky. Well, I'm going to tell everybody <laughs> like you need to go do that. Go watch that first episode. And let me explain why. Because if people see you now, and dude, you're a freaking rock star, right? Like they see you now, they watch your show, they hear you speak, like, wow, right? And, and they can start to compare, right? Sure. And they think, I want to do that, but I'm not that. And what I think is important, don't compare your day one to someone else's day 1,025. Right, no right? doubt. But people do that all the time. Sure. They'll see you online and they're like, I don't even know how I would get there or whatever. Go watch that. Right? And I and I think it's interesting because me and you started our show at the exact same time. Right. I didn't do it in a closet. I didn't do all that. I was still nervous. I was still fearful. I, I had fear and all that. And we were in a studio. Right. <laughs> we had somebody making us look good and sound good. That probably would have made me more nervous. <laughs> oh, I was nervous. Right. We just played our, our episode one again and watching it, I'm like, oh my gosh. Crazy. But it's it's amazing. It's amazing. And I think people need to go. I think there's more value in, in watching that to see, hey, you know what? Everybody's yeah. got to start somewhere. So for anybody that's out there and you're thinking like, I, I want to make an impact or we, we teach the job seekers, hey, I want to get my name noticed. I want people to see me, recognize me. And, and, and um, I think you should start a show or do something like that. Well, even if it's not a show, there's, there's, so I'm an equation guy. I like okay. equations, right? It helps my brain understand things. And so, you know, an equation that I learned through this season over the last four years is consistent Discipline compounded daily equals transformation. All right. Hold on. Say it again. <laughs> Consistent discipline compounded daily equals transformation. Love that. So whether it's a show, whether it's 
whatever, working out, whether it's drinking water every day, whether it's you want to transform your relationship with your spouse, you want to transform a relationship with your kids, you want to transform your finances, whatever it is that you want to see transformation, which the word transformation to me means from what was to something new, right? To me, that's an important part. Transformation isn't from what was to something that looks different. It's from something that was to something new, right? I was transformed when I realized we were spiritual beings and allowed God to start to lead my life. That was transformation, right? Right. That's what I'm talking about. So anytime you want to transform, if you really want to transformation, you're tired of it, you're fed up with it, you can't have it be this way anymore. You don't want to just doll it up, make it look a little bit different, right? Like your relationship with your spouse sucks, okay? It sucks. You don't just go date night once a month and hate each other at date night and look at your phone. No, <laughs> we're looking for transformation, Right? Full on transformation. So if that's what you want, this is the equation to get that. Consistent discipline compounded daily equals transformation. So it's a consistent action that compounds over time. So my show, I just did it every day and it starts to compound over time, right? And it was a discipline. Discipline means not easy, a stretch, uncomfortable, sometimes painful, sometimes hard, right? These are the things that we have to do in order to really transform. You can't just hang out, you know, laying in the sympropedic and expect transformation, right? That's just not how it works. So the discipline part means it's got to be, it's got to be a little bit of a stretch for you. But if you consistently, consistent uh, discipline compounded and then do it daily. And here's the key, dude, people don't understand and I did not used to understand momentum. Now we see it in sports, right? First there's a fumble. Oh my gosh, interception. Oh my gosh, they got the onside kick. Like momentum happens and we see it in sports all the time. Well, it happens in our life also. When's the best time to sell a car? Right after you just sold one, yep. right? Like yep. momentum is, is, a, is a thing. What we tend to do, especially in America, I don't know other countries, I've never experienced them as well, we will do things consistently, but not daily. Mm. So define that. If somebody says I work out consistently, what does that mean to you? Once a week, twice could, a week. Could be once a week, could be twice a week, could be three, right? Yeah. I, I, they could say I consistently work out once a year, mm. right? Anything can be put into consistently. Daily is a whole different thing. So we'll see people that'll wake up early Monday through Friday, sleep in on the weekend. Mm -hmm. You see people that will, you know, work out certain days, but if they're on vacation, they're not going to work out. Right. If they're traveling, they're not going to hit it. Right. And that's why people will have these two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, because you lose momentum when you do that. Bro, Daily I gotta tell you, you're heat. talking, you're telling me what I know, okay? You, you tell him, you're talking to me. You are, you're saying me. So, okay, you, you sent me this. Yes. All right, we're gonna talk about this in a second. Yeah. You sent me the Morning Five Planner, and that's exactly what it is, bro. I got in here and I started doing it. I'm like, yeah, it's feeling good. Love it, love it, love it. Weekend. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. Daily, five days a week, and then weekend. And then something would come up. Yeah. Right? So daily is definitely like that's the key because otherwise that is the key. I, I fall off, right? Hundred percent. But I will tell you this, which we're gonna talk about when we get back from the commercial break. This right here works. Yeah. Because even even though I haven't necessarily been every day, sure, I'm seeing massive. Um, Massive transformation. Love it. So, guys, we got to go to a real quick break, but don't go anywhere. We got more Glenn Lundy when we come right back. Trevor Houston here, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. We hope you've been inspired, encouraged, educated, and entertained all at the same time. For information on our different events, workshops, partners, or partnership opportunities available, check out whoyouknow.show for more details. And be on the lookout for our new mobile app coming soon. You never know how this show can help someone you know. You know, and if we've made an impact or put a smile on your face today, don't forget to hit that share button on your way out. Until next week, it's all about who you know. Bye.